Hello everyone to LabVIEW exercises. In this exercise, we are going to build a smart energy meter in LabVIEW. In this application, we will see if I run this program and we have multiple loads in here. Let's just say this is load 1 and 2 and we just want to find out for how much time it just rained. So it means that for how much seconds this particular LED just was turned on and off. So then we can just assign them a particular values or if we are acquiring the real time data or the load uh, from some sensors as well then we can just implicate it and then we can find out how much time it just run and then we can multiple uh, we can apply uh, our required functions and values so to find out the original results if we are building a new one so it is just an exercise and give you the basic idea so if I just turned it off so it means that the LED 2 or the load 2 is just uh, turned on uh, for this much time so similarly if I just turn off it was almost turned uh, it was almost on for 20 seconds right now we can also divide those uh, by 60 to turn it into minutes and similarly into an hour if it is required so right now i will stop my application and just go to my new vi to build up uh, a new and let's just see how it works so let's just say this is our load one and similarly i can make a copy of it and this will be considered as load two and let's just go to our table function so that we can uh, visualize our outputs on a table which would give us a better idea as well and uh, let's just jump on to our block diagram change into control and in this exercise we'll also get to see how event structure works basically so place that event structure in here and close that with a while loop Create a control, place a control at a proper space and now we can just assign those load to a particular event structure. So edit events handled by this case. So this is load 1 and we can just add an event case and set it to load 2. It means that uh, when only this load 2 will be pressed or changes its value then only this event case will gonna occur or will gonna play and uh, similarly we can set this stop uh, stop button as well to so that if we press this stop button the application should be stopped so add an event case and this will be our stop button so that's how the we have generated our three event structures so any one of the value changes then only this event structure will be played we can also the, uh, set the event structure depending upon uh, the different values of numeric as well so that if we want to set uh, these load to certain conditions like changing values so right now i have this one so we'll go to comparison and choose select to set out its value such as uh, to visualize it was turned on and off and like this way that will be connected in here and this one in here so we must also need to get at what time it was turned on and off so that's why we are getting these functions and here we must have to concatenate it so for that purpose we are going to string and then concatenate string so we just have to delete this out and then connect that in here we must have to separate those values as well so for that purpose we can just create a constant in here that will be semicolon that will show us uh, the separation between the date time and the on and off function so this will be giving in here and again this function will be connected in here which gives us the separation and finally we have this input in here so now we have created this 
date and time along with on and off and now we want to set it into uh, build give it into an array function so we are going to use insert into an array so we will give this as a new value uh, well, but we must have to set the array header as well so we will just gonna click it into our loop so it means that we we are going to build a re uh, replace with shift uh, shift registers so it means that the values will be retained into the loop and it will be collected in, in an array form so create a constant in here and let's just say just elongate it and i'll give it a header of load one so that's how it will be started and this will be our initial value but we must also have to give the index uh, increasing index so that it will be saved into a proper value of prep proper um, uh, row with uh, within the array so for that purpose we are going to use the increment function so I'm going to use the numeric constant in here to set its value and again we are going to use the replace with shift register and give this value to increasing index similarly we must also have to get the elapsed time as well so that we can come to know for how much time that particular led was turned on and off uh, so yeah elapsed time function in place in here we must also have to reset it uh, depending on this led so we just connect the reset in here and now we have this elapsed time which could be divided by 60 and giving us minute or hours depending on, on our requirements so yeah but again we must have to convert it into uh, an array form so insert into an array give it this way and connect it to the loop and again change uh, replace it with the shift register as it is developed in here let's just give the first value zero as an header and again we can connect that uh, increasing function or increment in here to give it to the proper um, uh, proper value or the proper place we can also check that from here as well let's just create an indicator in here but first we must ha have also to pass these values in here as well similarly for the stop function as well and now i think so we can check if it is working fine or not we must also have to elongate it to see if it works fine or not so let's just go in here place that in here and let's just see so yeah Oops. so exactly we are saving the values with date and time according to its turn on and off time so it will give us more sense when it will be saved into the tablet form so we will remove the broken wires in here but we must have to replicate this out into our second event structure as well so i'll just copy that all of the things place those things in here Similarly, we can just again build that. All right, so let's just make a copy out of it. 
connect that in here and this will be connected with our outer loop replaced with the shift register so yeah and then this will be as a load tool will be connected with our this broken wire and the loose ends will be could be deleted afterwards this load to function will be connected in here and the last part is this wire so we can just remove the broken wires from here and uh, So now we must have to make sure that all the values passes to their respect, respective ends in each structure. Now we just have to build uh, an array to put that all the values into this table form as well. So for that purpose we are going to use a build array function in here. The only problem is we must have to convert this um, numeric data into the string form so that we can save it into a single form. Number to fractional string and that will be connected in here then this will be connected to this element and the, our next element is in here. Similarly, change this one as well. So right now we can directly give it to uh, this table, but it most probably be giving us um, the values into a rows form. So we do not need that into a row. We just need that into a column way so for that that's why we are going to use we are going to use another function from the array we are going to use transpose to the uh, array so we'll just delete this and we will just click out in here and also as we can see our stop function is outside of our event structure so we'll place that in here and keep all the other create a constant false and here create a constant as false so let's just go back again and right now if we are running this program uh, but before that we must also have to set one more thing create a local variable and set outside as zero so to give as oh, sorry instead of zero it is a boolean function so we must have to say false so create a local variable again um, give the same condition as false so that it, all, it should always start from being false condition so yes that's how The date and time for turning on and off of an LED is saved in here. So we must have to stop it and we can just increase its size to check whether it is properly saved or not. So yes, this is the time for which for LED 1 is turned on and off. We can also add one more column in here that would give us um, the times for how many times a certain load was turned on and off and so those have separate entries right now which is telling us that for how many times a certain load is turned on and off and for how much time so we can also calculate 
some other parameters as well if we just want to save that data into an excel sheet we can also do that for that purpose you can just watch out my this video the link will be attached into the description so i hope this will give you a very generic idea of how to build a smart energy metering lab view